Okay, Northampton Council on Aging and Senior Services Board meeting. Today is Thursday, February 11, 2016. The public session, I see no members of the public here. So we'll skip to the approval of the minutes from the January 14th meeting. Barbara? I approve it. Okay, second. <laughs> second by Jim. Uh, any changes, uh, exceptions, problems with it? Everybody liked it? Very good. Excellent, Joanne. Thank you. No problem. Uh, all those in favor of uh, say, accepting the minutes, say aye. Aye. Say aye. All those opposed? Thank you. That motion, motion has been covered. Done. Staff report. Heather, Kahane, Program Coordinator. So before Heather starts, if I could just uh, say something. Uh, Heather um, was appointed, uh, I appointed her on Tuesday as the um, acting or interim assistant director. So um, she is serving in that capacity, but also um, doing program coordinating work. And a lot of the duties have, have been um, sort of farmed out to other um, members of the staff. So nothing will fall apart um, in the interim. So yeah, we'll still have wonderful programming. <coughs> so I think it's been quite a while since I've actually been to the board meeting. So I just wanted to tell you about some successful programs as of late and some new programs coming up. So most recently we had a brain healthy eating program with Amber Village. Can you you have a Oh, sorry, I'm losing my voice today, too. You're having us up to sit here um, while you're doing your report. <laughs> okay. Is that your point? Senior, you're here, you're here. <coughs> So most recently, we had a brain healthy eating program with Armbrook Village. They brought healthy lunch for everyone as well as nutrition information. Is that better? Mm-hmm. Um, grocery list ideas, ways to eat healthier because eating healthy is so important, not just for seniors, but for anyone. anyone. Um, good for your brain and good for your body. Then we also had the Turkey Dinner Fundraiser sponsored by Care One. I think several of you were at that. Um, it was a great event, wonderful food, good entertainment. We grossed $462. The money made from this event will support the transportation program. We've also had some wonderful collaborations with the Food Bank of Western Massachusetts. They do a lot of really wonderful programming. So we've done Healthy Eating for Healthy Weight, a two-part diabetes workshop, some guided grocery store tours where everybody meets at Stop and Shop and they go around the store and learn about reading food labels and what's healthy and all the different things at the grocery store and they get a free grocery store gift card afterwards. So that's a really great and very popular program. We continue to do the haircut program with Kendra Kaczynski and the Smith Vocational Students. Haircuts are $5 for seniors, and this is for any senior, not just Northampton seniors. Um, tomorrow is actually a haircut day. There's a few appointments left if anyone is looking. And we'll also have haircuts on March 18th. So we've had very, very positive feedback from these students and instructors and the seniors about this program. This is a sample of your work question. Very popular program. As soon as it's done, they're trying to come back and sign up for the next month. So that's been wonderful. We actually had a call, I believe, from, was it Connecticut? Brandy. Today? Brandy. 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 Oh, I think it was but people are seeing it far and wide and trying to come get their hair cut here in Northampton. <laughs> um, a few new programs here at the Senior Center. We just started up a Tuesday afternoon tea. So from 2.45 to 3.45, we're doing light refreshments and tea. Any senior with a scan card is welcome to attend. We've started a conversational Spanish class which has finally gotten off the ground. We've tried it a few times, but this time we had enough attendance. We have a wonderful professor from Westfield State who's doing the class, so that's been great. It just started, um, there's an option to drop into the class, so. He's an ex I, I'm taking the class and he's an exceptional instructor. Very, <laughs> very detail-oriented and very student-oriented. Yeah. 
Wait, there's it? Monday afternoon at yep, 1. Yeah, Mondays from 2 to 3.15 p.m. Um, then we also started up a free Tai Chi class for Northampton seniors. This started in January. This meets Monday, Wednesday, and Friday afternoons from 2.45 to 3.45. It's free for Northampton seniors with a scan card, $5 for other seniors. Um, it started off pretty good, and in the last class we had 14 people in attendance. So we've had between 5 and 14 people at every class. There was also a big article in the Gazette, and I'm sure many of you saw it. So it's gotten some good publicity. The instructor's wonderful. Um, this is an addition to the Thursday afternoon fee-based Tai Chi class. So lots of opportunities for Tai Chi at the Senior Center. Then just a few upcoming events. Um, the Author of the Month program is going very well. We're actually booked out in July for that program. In February, we'll have Brian Adams with his book, Love in the Time of Climate Change. That's February 16th at 1 o'clock. Exceptional and good read, by the way. He is a very good writer, and it's a really good read. I haven't read. Every time the authors come, they say, have you read the book yet? And I always feel so guilty by the time we get to them all. So, but we have some great authors coming. Um, in March, Hal Portner, he's actually a senior center participant. He comes to the fitness center. He wrote a book called The Guardian's Way. It's a fantasy novel. Um, he'll be here Tuesday, March 22nd at 1 o'clock. And then in April, we have Jacqueline Sheehan coming. She just released her fifth novel called The Center of the World, and she'll be here April 19th at 1 o'clock. She is a two-time New York Times bestseller. Yeah. When she was on the list for almost five weeks at one point in the last book, she's a very good writer also. Yeah. And her new book is very, very good. I have a time to read all these things. I read all of them. I guess. I read fast. So she'll be coming to do that, but she will also be doing a writing workshop on April 12th at 10.30 a.m. So that should be very popular. Um, then some other stuff that will be coming up, sort of in the planning stages, a karate class in collaboration with Northampton Karate, a watercolors class, and some dance classes. Another new thing that we're doing is we have some nursing students from Elms College who are coming on Thursday afternoons. They'll actually be here so you can all go have your blood pressure taken when you leave the board meeting. So they're starting out doing blood pressure clinics. Um, on February 25th, they will do a presentation on heart attacks um, to follow the theme of American Heart Month. And they'll be here in March and April covering various health topics. And then last but not least, um, we have the corned beef and cabbage dinner coming up on Saturday, March 19th from 11.30 to 1.30. We will have the five-piece Celtic band Celtic Time here for entertainment. Tickets will go on sale Monday, February 22nd, and they will be $10 for Northampton seniors and $15 for non-resident seniors and members of the public. There's a lot of good stuff going on and it'll help spread the word. Any questions? Is there a cost on Jacqueline's workshop? I think we're going to do it for free. It's a great opportunity. She's yeah, considering she time. gets a thousand bucks a week for a workshop. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know that, but she's happy to donate her time and come do her reading. So we've been going to take it. Yeah, well, yes. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you very much, Evelyn. Move on to finances. FY16. Everybody should have a copy. Where are the extra copies so Lorraine can have one? Yeah, I can share. Okay, if I have some other than the so in looking at our personal no. services, um, we have $21,984.08 yes. to pay salaries. Um, and again, as I say in every meeting, um, we have an obligation, we meaning senior services, through our grants and our revolving accounts, 
to pay for our portion because here's the city appropriation and then there's a considerable amount that we come up with as well to um, have what we have. So that money starts getting transferred between May and June, um, which you know our obligation. Then we still have funds in our uh, accounts for office supplies, recreation supplies, travel. Um, so we've used 40.6 percent of that. So that's pretty good considering where we are in the, the fiscal year, because it will end June 30th, 2016. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what we got. Okay. Any questions on any of the items here? Yes, Jim. What happens if we don't use it all? Whatever you don't use in this account goes back to the general fund. And that last year we did turn money back because we didn't use all the money, um, like for um, services to have anything repaired. So we now, don't get we, penalized. We don't get penalized if we don't use it all. No, does it look like okay? Well, you didn't spend that much money last year, so we're not giving you that. Um, this year, for our for the, well, sort of the next item is FY17 budget. It's like level of services, so it's you can't add anything new to your budget, so it shouldn't be going up based on a new program. But I will just add that um, in having a meeting with the mayor on Tuesday. You know level services but we're starting a transportation program we're going to have two vans and they can't just sit out there you know we need to have drivers and we need to have a dispatcher um, so that what I have to do um, is put together a proposal uh, you know just what the whole program is going to be about and what our needs are for it so that will be talked through different processes with the budget um, which will be sometime in March it will also need gas yeah, and, and you know when we had the other vans, we pretty much um, came up with the money for. And again, the van wasn't everywhere every day, so you didn't need a dispatcher. It's kind of like what we did internally. Um, but we paid for the gas, we paid for all the maintenance. You know, and, you know when it was two thousand dollars, we were paying for it. There wasn't anything in our budget appropriation from the city, so anything to do with that, we we paid for it through again our revolving accounts, whatever money we came up with, with whatever way we came up with it. Um, it'd be good if we could roll that into the transportation program this time. Well, it would be good, uh, you know, we, I, I think we can't come up with that much money for all the drivers no. um, and um, for a dispatcher. You know, that's a considerable amount. And I don't believe anyone would be hired full time. It would be part time um, up to maybe 19 hours. And I, I, again, working on the proposal for what the staffing of that would be. Yeah, so, you know, that's, you know, it's, lo it's been a long time coming um, to get the two vans and, um, you know, then to make sure that people have the opportunity to get on it and get here and get home. So. Any uh, questions? Additions or anything? Okay, we move on to FY17 then. Yep. So the FY17 budget is due tomorrow to the mayor's office. Um, and again, as I said, it's level services. So um, it's going to be what we had for staffing and what we had for um, our OM account. There's not, you're not going to see any increase, but it's like where is that money going to be coming from for our portion of it? And that would be through the um, executive office of elder affairs grant and our revolving accounts so when we're bringing in money for um, you know fees for classes or fundraisers uh, the annual appeal any of those kinds of things coffee shop gift shop that's how we come up with our portion of the um, budget so once uh, i do the budget i'll make sure you all get a copy of that and you can peruse it and then probably by march meeting uh, i will maybe have yeah. met with the mayor maybe not in march sometime we're starting to go over the budgets with the mayor and finance director you can at least see you know what portion we have to come up with any questions on that comments okay let's move on to the director's report yes um, the first thing i wanted to uh, mention was that maureen sinkowitz one of our board members her husband peter passed away 
um, and I believe all those services are happening through a her funeral home. Um, I don't know if it, I haven't seen today's paper yet, so I don't Not know in. if it, okay. 20. 24th, 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 24th. Okay, so the 24th of February um, are, what, the week? 24th, that's a Wednesday. Um, well, I guess we'll see it in the paper. Um, but anyway, the, I have a card that I'm going to pass around, so if everybody wants to write a message um, or sign it, and we will end up with you, Bob. Um, the annual appeal envelope, all of you are Northampton residents and would have gotten your annual appeal envelope in your street listing. And that was a no. Didn't get one. I got one for the schools, but I didn't get one for I the city. I got one. 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 I turned it in. You're in Ward 5. You're in Ward 5. Yeah. I'm in Ward 5. I got one. We got the school thing, but we didn't get one. Huh, that's oh. interesting. You got the school. Yeah, okay. I'll give you a middle street. Just I'll yet. take it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have a bunch of them around the building. Uh, but anyway, that went out, and we have been um, getting those back. Usually they start coming back right away, and they keep coming back all the way through to December. Um, but the bulk of them usually is um, from initially when it's mailed out to um, like June or July, and then it dwindles off, and then people you know, make a lot of contributions near the end of the year. So we get more of them then. Um, Heather already mentioned we have four nursing students from the Elms, um, and, and they did the blood pressure last week. <clears throat> we had them out in the lobby so that, you know, they could really find people to have their blood pressure taken. And they'll be doing a variety of programs in here. That you know, We've talked to them, we did an orientation and did a, a tour of the senior center. So we're looking forward to some of the nice opportunities that they'll present to um, the seniors here and they are here to thursdays two to four so um, it's good to have some other things happening at the end of the day uh, the tuesday tea was already mentioned um, we started we've had it twice uh, january 26 um, was the first one uh, and the attendance is you know sort of hit or miss you just drop in um, you know if we have 20 people that's great if we have four people that's great but we want people to come in it's sort of an end of the day uh, program where people can get together but also to get more people in the building near the end of the day similar to um, the uh, Tai Chi having that is to get more people near the end of the day and um, we use white tablecloths and we have centerpieces and we have beautiful teacups that we've been accumulating over the years so you know if you think i just need to take a break and have a cup of tea um, and we can provide coffee if that's what you want because everybody's not a tea drinker it's just a nice social event similar to how nice and social it is for people to get together for a cup of conversation um, so we have um, high hopes that more people will be coming to that uh, we are looking for um, a volunteer to facilitate that, meaning that they would get everything prepared for the uh, tea, meaning getting the tables um, set up with the tablecloths and teacups and all of that. Um, we did have a blood drive, <coughs> excuse me, January 18th, and we co-sponsored that with the uh, Red Cross, and it was held over at the World War II Club, and just so you'll know, 47 pints of blood were uh, donated and that translates into almost 150 lives that would be touched by that blood donation um, and they're interested in co-sponsoring it again with us and I'm hoping that this time we would have it here at the senior center a number of years ago we had one here and if I can recall Jim Dostal who used to organize it for the city is the one who made the arrangements um, to have it here so um, we'll be having a PBTA, uh, Pioneer Valley Transit Authority, Air Public Transportation, a ridership meeting here, which means um, any people who ride the, the service from PBTA can come and PBTA presents, you know, what they're doing, if there's changes, getting feedback. That's going to be February 25th, 2.30 to 3.30. And there's usually a very good turnout, and these are people who, who use their services from all over. It's not just Northampton. And I know many times our Disability Commission has members who come because they use the a lot. 
Um, Heather already mentioned the turkey dinner that was held and sponsored by Care One. Um, they had their chef and two of their employees come here to help put it on. They were wonderful to work with and I'm going to say that that kitchen was as clean as when John Kaczynski uses it and he's done. But the food, as Heather mentioned, was very good and it was interesting to see that Barbara and John help serve food. They weren't cooking the food. It was just an odd thing to see. We got I got a whole bunch of comments on the way out that people really enjoyed the meal. Yeah, because Jimmy right. helped serve. Um, but uh, they were really tickled with it. Yeah. And again, Cure One paid for all of the food. You know, they had everything from the turkey to the stuffing to the uh, desserts. It was just really. So didn't have, there was no ticket price? It, it was free? It, it, no, it, it was a fundraiser for okay. the transportation program. It was $10. Right. We can go and get a great meal for $10. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And 100% of it went into the senior center. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the dessert had a big piece of pie. Yeah, and, and, uh, and a sort of help. So one of the big things that will be coming up is our health and safety for a fair. It's our 14th annual. And like, oh my gosh, I've been doing the annual for 14 years. <laughs> and this we will be your last. It, you're right, it is going to be my last. Um, it, originally we started up at the Alps. You know, it worked out really yeah. nice there. And then we had a senior center. It works out nicely here between the great room and the um, lobby. Um, and we usually have uh, 65 to 67 vendors. We hope we get the Lions Club blood um, I-Mobile out there. And um, so right now it's um, getting all of the documents uh, updated and then mailed out. And I think our mailing list is over 150 vendors. Um, so we yeah. have a great turnout. It's a, really a nice sure. event. Um, we have Barbara who will sit there and get customer Forms filled out for FSB Choice Awards um, to vote for the Senior Center for their uh, vote with being a customer of Florence Savings Bank. Um, and that's a day, too, that we do need a lot of volunteers. One of the things that we do is Mary's Bistro is open, and we have runners who go to the vendors and get um, their meal uh, menu back, and, and so there's people who are needed for that. So that, that's going to be happening. So you'll, uh, I'm sure, be getting phone calls. <laughs> and then lastly, I just got a wonderful letter today um, that Florence Savings Bank Customer Choice Awards that we did get enough votes to receive funding from them. So we are one of the groups that will be part of the $100,000 that they give to um, an organization. So it's Northampton Senior Center slash Elder Vision Inc. because Elder Vision Inc. is the 501c3 nonprofit that um, the money goes through. Um, and that is used for the transportation program. And every year that they've had that, um, we have been able to receive funding. And I will say Barbara uh, Fungaroli has been instrumental in getting a lot of votes for us. I mean, we do have the box on the counter, but at many of our large events, Barbara's there um, getting people, they don't go by her without filling out the form. Little twisting of arms. And so, uh, of so we'll find out that night. The event is held here. They've been holding it here, I'm gonna say maybe four years um, oh, in yeah, the great room. And it, it, what's nice is that all these organizations come into our building. And, and see what our building is like and that you know there's a lot happening here and again we have the books and the mini sale and people take an opportunity to to buy while they're here receiving some funding so that will be here at the senior center um in march and the date for that i do march uh, march 9th and so an organization can invite two people to, um, to that. It used to be you could invite a number of people, but now it's down to two people. So they do a, a very nice job. They have it um, catered and um, they actually are hiring one of our seniors to play the piano. Um, they've done that in the past, so this year they're doing that. And they just do a very, very organized and nice job doing something so special and that's 
giving out grants to um, any organizations, and we will be one of them. And they've increased the money considerably over the years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was seventy-five thousand, and they increased it to a hundred thousand. But then they also give some smaller grants out to um, organizations. They um, will pick some of them out of the hat, and so there's another way some people can still have an opportunity to get funding. That's what I have for my report. Any questions, comments? Okay, uh, let's move on to building and grounds. Yes, um, five college learning retirement will be here again. Um, they'll be here five weeks in April. What that means is they hold their great decisions program in the great room um, on Friday mornings. It's nice having all of them in the building. Um, the World War II Club, um, the Veterans Luncheon, uh, their kitchen still has not been um, repaired, so they still are using our kitchen. Um, they are cooking here and bringing the food over to World War II Club. So um, I don't know how much longer they'll be doing it, but it's, they had to put up new sheetrock. I mean, their kitchen was really damaged from the water. Um, so they're here for a while. And as I said, I think last time they are also keeping some of their frozen items in our freezer uh, and using our refrigerator because they, they are lacking all of that with no kitchen. But they've helped us over the years also with mm -hmm. parking. And yes, if absolutely. If we have a weekend, they, they'll provide parking. Yeah, we asked uh, to use their parking lot, for instance, with the health and safety fair, you know, where our vendors park over there so that it's all open up for our, um, our people. Who are coming as, as patrons of our health and safety fair. Uh, Bob Kais um, is doing an excellent job keeping our sidewalks clear. Uh, I know we haven't had a lot of snow, but the snow we've had has been, you know, horrendous. Um, and then yesterday, you know, with that storm that we had, um, somebody had slipped in the parking lot, and so uh, I called DPW to have it sanded, and they came right down to do that. So uh, Rich Parcelletti is you know, very in tune with the, the senior center and wants to keep it plowed and safe for everybody. So it's been nice being able to rely on him. Um, I will say that also something that happened in our parking lot, um, a member of the senior center um, has a Rolls Royce and um, someone had keyed it and oh, no. stole a hubcap. So, you know, the police were informed and that's being worked on. Um, it's awful that happened. So, yeah, and I also will mention that a couple of weeks ago we had um, somebody shooting up in the men's room. Um, it was an interesting situation in the fact that there was so much noise going on there. John Kaczynski was here. He went in and uh, talked to the individual in the men's room, and he, you know, he was going to be done. He was going to be done, and it was near closing time. I think John went in twice, and then I went in and asked him to leave. And yeah, so anyway, there was uh, he left um, the bathroom in really bad condition. Um, he was leaving the area. I just happened to look back in the bathroom, and there was a needle on the floor. I went out to tell him that he left his needle in the bathroom. And he told me that it was John's needle. Ah. Oh, John. <laughs> <laughs> so, the police, so all of this happened very quickly, and um, the police did find him up at the end. And um, unfortunately, it's not—he's not unknown to the police. And it, it was just like we just need to be more cognizant of who's in the building and somebody walking through and. You know, nobody really saw him come in the front door and go into the men's room, but then there was just a lot of noise, um, a lot happening in that bathroom with him. So, um, you know, we just, that made us have to be more aware of who's in our building and what are they doing. And no police uh, call or anything? Yeah, uh, okay. yeah, the, yeah, Barbara Kaczynski was on the phone um, while he was in the um, bathroom leaving. I mean, again, this happened all so fast. And so a police officer, you know, again, they got, got him up here, but there wasn't anything that they could arrest him for because you can have a needle. And I didn't notice anything going on when I went in here to ask him what was going on. I didn't notice any needle or anything like that until she saw it on the floor. 
So he, you know, he could say it's not even his needle. He said it was yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and then a police officer did come in and um, I talked with some medicines. And no, again, we're just being more aware of people who might look out of place. But then again, you know, it's, uh, you know drugs are <coughs> not of a certain group of people. So we just have to be more aware of what's going on. And, you know, staff has been told that, you know, if you think something bizarre is going on in an area, just go right in. I, you know, I just went right in the men's room and I would do the same thing again, which yeah, a lot near. It's not funny, but <laughs> yeah, he's going in the men's room. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> well, in the grammar there school, was something going on. in grammar school, the only teachers who would go in the men's room were married teachers. <laughs> Women teachers were the only ones who, oh, well, I mean, in a male, but we had no men teachers in grammar school. Okay. So that, right. but now it's like if you think there's something going on, then um, then you do something. And um, we're going to have signs up that <clears throat> if you're, you know, in any of the bathrooms, obviously it would be the multi stalled ones, that if you feel there's something happening, you know, please come and report it to the, um, the desk. And then the desk, you know, I wouldn't expect somebody like Mary, who's a receptionist, to interact mm -hmm. about it. It would come get a staff person, and we would we would do something. Yeah. Well, so I call nine one one. We we just want it to be safe for everyone. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and again, we've been here since two thousand and seven. That's the first time that something like that has happened. And I did call Bob um, after the incident just to let him know that he had a lot to do cleaning up in the bathroom. So, but it's um, a public building, and that's uh, it's a problem. You always have a public building, right? Well, there there was a, a news report uh, a number of months ago that um, public buildings were being used for um, individuals to shoot up. That they were getting their drugs, and you know that it's sort of a safe community to go into because it's really paying attention to that. So, so we we're paying more attention now. So that's what I have for buildings and grounds. Okay, any questions, comments? So, okay, we'll move on to old business. Update on the fitness center meeting. Yeah. So um, four mm -hmm. vendors responded to our request for quotes for fitness equipment, and um, I passed everything on to Joe Cook, our procurement officer. There's a few things that have to get changed um, based on what some of the vendors did or didn't offer in the, the quote. And you usually have to look at the lowest bidder. Um, so uh, I need to contact the vendors for additional information. Hopefully that can be done by tomorrow and then we can put out a formal contract to have fitness equipment, which then means it all gets moved. Um, and I would say if they do it in a day, it means that the fitness center would be closed for a day and I hope people can handle that. I think they can, knowing that it's going to be in a better place <coughs> for more. I understand it. Yeah. I mean, you can't have people on the equipment move piece by piece and simply be here and unsafe. <laughs> Somebody will want to appropriate money. Yeah, you're right. Don't know. Oh, no, yeah. yeah. um, so that'll happen soon. It's, it's closer than it was, you know, back in January, so it's, it's good. Okay, uh, any comments on that one? No. Uh, BCAA program update. So the Benefits Counseling Program is going to be handled and uh, operated by Highland Valley Elder Services. And Jerry Ann Butler is the interim coordinator um, for that program. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So, you know, Jerry Ann has a lot of experience working with clients and knows the benefits that are out there because of her former position um, and so eventually everything will be just out of Highland Valley except for all of the MOUs that are, are handled with senior centers or other <coughs> agencies where the volunteers which already exist uh, will be placed so some volunteers will be here for um, office hours, they'll be at Amherst Senior Center, East Hampton Senior Center, or wherever people um, are 
putting, uh, they're signing off on an MOU, a Memorandum of Understanding for use um, with the Benefits Counseling. And again, it, it's a terrific program because it really puts everything together for how that individual can get help with public benefits. So I, I thank you for taking uh, that up, opportunity. And, and the phone number will be changing soon. It's still, they're still working it out through Highland Valley. So the messages are still coming into um, extension 1230 and I'm picking them up for appointments, but that's going to end pretty soon. And there'll be a, a link that says, this is the new phone number when people call in. Mm -hmm. Okay, any questions or comments? No. <clears throat> 216 Senior Veteran Tax Program Program? Yep, so the tax program, they are, there are 17 seniors, two of whom I still have to interview and get their financial information, and we have five veterans. Um, two of the veterans are working here at the Senior Center, and I have um, two seniors who are working on the reception desk, so we have four. Um, there's a number of places throughout the city where we have um, assigned uh, tax work off people, Forbes Library, Weed School, Bridge Street School, um, to name a few. <laughs> Arts Council, there are, we have a, uh, quite a few of them. It's really, really, um, you know, this is the third year the program's been going on and there's just been such success with it for both the departments and for the um, <coughs> participants in the program. Okay, any questions on that? No, we'll move on to silent auction. Yep. So I've talked about the silent auction. I met with uh, Melissa Einberg, who is one of our um, board members, and she's interested in working on it, um, not necessarily to be a coordinator. So we're still looking for someone or two people to be doing that. So if you know of anyone or you are so inclined, you know, again, talk to me. But it wouldn't be until, the event itself would not be until October. I would think um, because it takes a while to get it all together so um, there are some people who are interested in working on it but not coordinating it that's all I have for the silent auction we already have some items so yeah we're we're ready to go <laughs> okay uh, Valentine's Day pancake breakfast yeah so that, that happened today yeah um, we had a nice group of people. I want to thank John and Barbara Kaczynski for doing the pancakes and the sausage. And Bob was one of our servers. Lorraine was a server. Um, and we had other volunteers who helped out. And it was a very nice crowd. Uh, food was good and people, you know, had a nice conversations in there. It was nice. Nice you know, I'm telling you a little secret about how you make the pancakes so fluffy. <laughs> it wouldn't be a secret. Did you make them in heart shapes? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it was, it was a and heart on each one. Yeah. Barbara so made those. Small heart shape ones yeah. you put on top of the Very festive. I was they informed as a server to morning. always serve it with the heart facing the heart face. <laughs> I must have missed up the first <laughs> Well, you know how it is. Presentation is everything. You're right. <coughs> yeah, take was, directions. It was, very, it was a very nice breakfast. And it wasn't a fundraiser. It was just a program for <clears throat> having at the senior center. And um, I gave everybody who came a valentine. So hmm. Some people don't get valentines anymore. We'll have to do something. Do. Oh, I was going to say, we'll have to do something next year to do Valentine's, but I won't be here, so you somebody needs to carry it out. Maybe you can volunteer for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 that sign up sheet down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So again, thank, I thank everybody who helped with that. Okay, the 14th Annual Health yeah. and Safety Fair. Yeah, I think I already mentioned enough about that, that we will be looking for um, a number of volunteers to keep that going. And, you know, the day before is when we have to set up all the tables in the great room and in the lobby, which means all the furniture in the lobby has to get moved elsewhere. So we kind of have it down to a science. Um, so if you can push a chair, you can... Well, oh, Harry has a 60-foot yeah, or 100-foot tape measure. He does, so it gets all... all um, <laughs> 
I'll measure it out. We won't do that next year, right? Maybe you can. <laughs> no, you can volunteer. You can have a good employee here. You're not retiring from here. Maybe I'll get a phone call. Who knows? <laughs> no. Um, no. Okay. And then I just have one thing under eyes. Okay, and uh, then we have other. Here's something here. Yep. So because the health and safety fear falls on May 12th, which is a typical board meeting day, and this has happened in the past as well, um, I'm asking if we could change the meeting to to the 5th, to um, March 5th. May, 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 May uh, Excuse me, yes, thank you. May 5th. So it would be May 5th instead of uh, May 12th, and then everybody can come to the health and safety fair. The first June. Thursday instead of the second Thursday in May. Mm -hmm. Any problems? No. Nope. Good, thank you. That'll, that'll be beneficial. Thank you. Now, the new business assistant director and yep. director of positions. Yeah, so let me just fill you in on the whole package. Um, so the new director is going to be the person hiring the assistant director. So though Heather is now the interim ass assistant director, doesn't mean she can't apply, doesn't mean anything other than the fact that she's filling in that time frame until the director is hired, which may be by August or in August, um, and then that director would hire the assistant director. So the director would be um, before an interview committee, and again, the mayor will be putting that committee together, um, and then it's a mayoral appointment. So that, that's how that whole process will work. Um, in the meantime, as I said, Heather is the interim assistant director, so that's how that will happen. The uh, Barbara Kaczynski, who's the department secretary, is retiring as of August 1st. So that position will be um, um, out for a posting as well. And I worked on the job descriptions for assistant director. I'm working on the one for director and the department secretary to reflect what has really uh, changed within the jobs. And in most cases, it's that something else got added. So, you know, when somebody leaves a position is when you can really look at a job description and alter it um, to meet the needs of what that job is really about in this day and age. So that's what's happening with all of that. Okay, and uh, as all of you might know, as I hand you a copy of this, I wrote a letter to the mayor uh, on our behalf to see if we can't get a member or members of this board on the interview committee to assist with hiring a, a new assistant director. I mean, a new oh. executive director. Did I give you a copy of that? No, that's okay. I was I'll, I'll, I'll get you one. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. And uh, I hope this uh, can get his attention and we can get somebody on there because I think this, this board is, we, we are the board that works the most closely with the executive director. We have people who are most active in the city in dealing with senior services and uh, working out the senior, so. I would like to, uh, somebody to make a motion that we accept this, uh, this letter to be sent to the mayor on your behalf. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Anybody want to make that motion? I will. All right. Mike, second. Second, uh, Mike, okay. All those in favor of, or let first say, are there any changes you'd like to make or anything you find a problem with it? I know the writer over there is biting his tongue, but that's all right. <laughs> I just thought it would be it should be a little stronger, but that's you know, send, it right? <laughs> send it registered. Send it registered. Okay, so uh, shall we <laughs> shall we vote on whether we're accepting the letter or not? Uh, all those yes. in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you very much. I will see that the copy goes to the mayor. <coughs> Yes. It does that to assume then that this board has no direct say in the hiring of the new director? Okay. Only, the uh, uh, only at the mayor's committee? Only at the mayor's discretion. He is the person in charge of it all. He is putting the committee together. And uh, I think we should have, but uh, I don't think there is any in the bylaws or anything else. There is no legal right that he has to bother with us. 
Well, is it, is it too early to ask? Is there anyone who is present here today who would like to take that on to be that representative? That would be because if we don't have a rep, yeah, let's not send the letter. Yeah. Do we have anyone or any people who would like to, uh, Jim? Oh, okay. You're Jerry and Jerry. Okay. All right. Then, then let's go with the letter. Very, and very good candidates there, I think. Good. Good. And so, if the mayor does contact us, we hope. We have two names we can put yeah. to his. You don't want it to be the other way where you sent him a letter, he's you read it. You might want to put the names in that letter. These two people have volunteered already, so that brings the question up. It answers the question for him that we've already got two volunteers to fill this. Yeah, okay. yeah it could go on after right here. Right. In That's the second paragraph. This wheelhouse. Right. Or exactly. members. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. We'll amend the letter then. Uh, all those in favor of the letter? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone opposed to amending the letter? No. Good. Yeah, very good suggestion. Very good. And I, I will say that on many of the um, job interviews, um, I know, Mike, you sat in on a number of the um, job interviews. Um, I remember when I was um, hired, I remember Dottie Newman, a board member, Marilyn Stanley, a board member. And then there's always someone from um, Human Resources on it as well. So, but again, it's a mayoral committee, and um, you know, then that committee would make a recommendation to the mayor. Mm -hmm. But you know, people can have input. I'm sure there. I, I I'm sure there's going to be input in many ways yes. from others. Well, I think we have the the primary. I would think the primary responsibility is the input. Since we're going to work with this, as I mentioned in the letter, we. We will work, our, our function is vital to the executive director and having a good response, good responsible and reasonable response with that, that person. So we need to get in there. So Jim and Jerry, uh, yeah, thank you very much. We'll put your names in there. We'll see what happens. So it's Jerry, um, just to let everybody know. Jerry. Jerry and Butler. Jerry, yes. All one word. All one word, right? And if you look at, you can look at the plaque at the front of the uh, when the building was built. She was on the building committee. Mm -hmm. I was, yeah. 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 In bronze out there. Yeah. yeah. My name's out there in bronze too. It's good. I like it. It will be longer than we So in place, my name is in bronze. Okay, I think that just about uh, covers all uh, the announcements. Of course, uh, I have one more thing under new business. Um, I received a letter that um, we have a new board member, um, Marlene Morocco. She's good. I just got that on, um, I think, Tuesday that she was appointed to our board. By whom? By, By the mayor. So um, I'm sure she'll be at our next meeting. Last so. name like the country, Morocco? It's, uh, uh, I don't know that I have the right spelling for it. M, I think it's M-O-R-R-O-C-C-O. -R -R -O -C -C -O. And I think what we'll do now that, because she would make 14 mm -hmm. members, is to give everybody a new listing with uh, names and addresses and email addresses if you have them. So if anybody's uh, address or telephone numbers are changed since the last one. Yours has changed? My email's changed, yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, Joanne. Should, yeah, get it to Joanne. Get Joanne to yeah. yell on that one, and she'll put it in there. <coughs> okay, so uh, as I say, we've got the announcements at the bottom, the health and safety fair, corned beef, cabbage. And a reminder that uh, we appreciate your attendance. Thank you for all of you attending. We're getting much better attendance these days. We're doing very well. Jim, the you? photo club exhibit is now in the we're down to the last 10 for Boston, the Boston Public Library. So you're, you're in the final 10? We're in the final 10. Excellent. I'm just a little excited. Yeah, definitely, yes. How many do they choose? Okay, and all those, uh, just want to make a motion to? Uh, I was just going to say something that I mentioned about the towel dispensers and it moved. That's right. <laughs> fast. The next yeah. day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <my> <laughs> Being a board member does have some <laughs> Being important. I, I have another. I have a, a funny thing that I want to say that um, I'm a baby boomer, as you probably can tell. I am a senior, but um, I get a kick out of Clark Gable being in the 
uh, in the snack bar there, and I'm thinking, you know, we need to move to maybe George Clooney out there. Is it just as a joke? <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people are going to say, who's that now? Luckily, um, well, not too many here. Right, but we're moving income. in that direction. <coughs> yeah. and we need like, who's Clark Gable? Mm -hmm. I'll Look them up. I guess Google them. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but if we're idolizing that somebody, that was a gift from. Uh, <laughs> Blanche Wells Blanche. donated. Yeah. Yeah. She had a friend yeah. that donated it to us. Yeah, so if somebody gives us one, <laughs> so if you have a, if you have a like George Clooney, uh, I don't. It's just a joke. Well, just a, well, you have that joke. Yeah. What's the movie that the big famous movie? I can't come up with it. Um, Which one? That Clark Gable was in. Oh, that was Gone with the Wind. Oh, so if people no, are still cost, watching Gone with the Wind, and they you know, come a back all the time. I know it's a yeah. classic, but yeah, the costume he's wearing is in that picture, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. They just couldn't come up with it. Very so it is still one of the most dropout books from the Florence Library. Oh, yeah. I'm always fascinated. Yeah, yeah. 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 Always yeah. it's one of the top movies yeah. too yeah. Yeah. of all time. 1939. I wouldn't have known that. <laughs> That's before my time. Uh, okay, uh, if I want to make a motion to adjourn. Barbara, Mike, I'll second. Now we've already got the first and second. I'm third. Yeah. <laughs> Quick, get All out of here. Favor, say aye. aye. Anybody opposed, just stay right here. <laughs> Thank you, everyone.